Good afternoon and welcome to Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral. Our order for noonday prayer can be found in your digital bulletin or beginning on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together a portion of Psalm 57. We will read verses 6 through 11, found in your bulletin or on page 663 of the prayer book. Psalm 57, verses 6 through 11. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Awake, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 42 through 47. Jesus said, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake. It would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the Lesser Feast of Dunstan, Archbishop of Canterbury. In the ninth century, under King Alfred the Great, England had achieved considerable military, political, cultural, and even some ecclesiastical recovery from the Viking invasions. It was not until the following century, however, that there was a revival of monasticism and spirituality. In that, the leading figure was Dunstan. Dunstan was born about 909 into a family with royal connections. He became a monk and in 943 was made abbot of Glastonbury. During a year-long political exile in Flanders, he encountered the vigorous currents of the Benedictine monastic revival. King Edgar recalled Dunstan to England in 957, appointed him Bishop of Worcester, then of London, and in 960, named him Archbishop of Canterbury. Together with his former pupils, Bishops Ethelwald of Winchester and Oswald of Worcester, and later of York, Dunstan was a leader of the English church. All three have been described as contemplatives in action, bringing the fruits of their monastic prayer life to the immediate concerns of church and state. They sought better education and discipline among the clergy, the end of landed family interest in the church, the restoration of former monasteries and the establishment of new ones, a revival of monastic life for women, and a more elaborate and carefully ordered liturgical worship. This reform movement was set forth in the Monastic Agreement, a common code for English monasteries drawn up by Ethelwald about 970, primarily under the inspiration of Dunstan. It called for continual intercession for the royal house and emphasized the close tie between the monasteries and the crown. The long-term effects of this 10th century reform resulted in the retention of two peculiarly English institutions, the monastic cathedral and the Celtic pattern of monk bishops. Dunstan is also reputed to have been an expert craftsman His name is especially associated with the working of metals and the casting of bells, 
and he was regarded as the patron saint of those crafts. Dunstan died at Canterbury in 988. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Direct your church, O Lord, into the beauty of holiness, that following the good example of your servant Dunstan, we may honor your Son, Jesus Christ, with our lips and in our lives, to the glory of his name, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. We continue to pray for peace between Israel and Palestine. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.